why diets will always fail you every single time, no matter who you are. You are not crazy. You are not a failure. You are not lazy. You are not unmotivated. You're not someone who just can't get results. You're not any less than or better than, <laughs> for that matter, than anyone else. And you are definitely not crazy. Diets will always fail you in the long run. And tonight we're going to talk, we're going to walk through four specific reasons. Now, I do want you to understand that at the end of the day, if you're someone who is going to be like, oh, I did this diet and it worked and blah, blah, blah. Listen, you ain't got to be here. <laughs> this is my main point. My main point is in the long run, diets are going to fail you because literally diets are meant to be temporary. And we'll dive a little bit more into that later. But just in case it's your first time joining one of my videos, my name is Bianca Lynch of BiancaLynchCoaching.com. I'm an accountability coach. So I help millennials turn their health wealth and bucket list goes into reality, which is a fancy way for saying I am the foot in your ass to help you get more shit done more often so you can actually accomplish your most important goals by focusing on small habits. Now, that was kind of a mouthful, but anywho, let's let's dive into why diets will always fail you. I got my four things over here in my notes. I'm excited to jump into this. If you guys have any questions, of course, feel free, feel, feel free to drop them below. This is the live session. This is episode three of Goal Slay Monday. It's kind of hard to say Goal Slay Monday. Goal Slay. Goal Slay Monday. Anyway, this is episode number three in a series. So this is going to be every Monday evening. It'll probably be 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but I'll always post beforehand and let you guys know. So again, any questions, drop them below. I'm going to upload this to my IGTV. So feel free to at me, even if you do not catch the live. Now, why diets will always fail us. Number one, if you think about the way a diet is structured, a diet is most of the time meant to be something that you temporarily do to lose weight. Now, understand that as humans, we all have habits. Every last one of us. Actually, a large majority of the things that we do every single day are done because of habit. That's why you do things like drive somewhere and then you have no idea what you were doing for the last 10 minutes so you realize you didn't see anything because literally your brain, your brain, like it's a habit and your brain is not going to like use excess energy to think about it. You know, you don't really think about brushing your teeth. You don't think about taking a shower. You don't think about putting your seatbelt on whenever you get into the car. You don't think about making your morning cup of coffee because a lot of things things are habits and when you think about the way habits work and how we end up you know how we have habits a lot of times it's things that we've been doing for years at least months but a lot of times they're things we've been doing for years so one main reason why a diet isn't going to work because how the hell do you expect to just out of nowhere turn around everything you've been doing for the last however many years how do you, how do you expect to just stop that well self-discipline my favorite one, motivation, fuck off. No, it's it's honestly, it is completely unrealistic. And I mean, it's why the diet industry has so much money because we keep failing and we keep trying new ones. And in reality, in my opinion, you know, it's all just kind of doing the same thing over and over again. You know, these days it's all about, um, it's all about keto, which is essentially low carb, not new, or intermittent fasting, aka skipping breakfast. So in reality, all of these things always add up to eating less calories than you burn period or burning more calories than you eat whichever way you want to flip it but again at the end of the day going back to the habits so literally imagine if you're a coffee drinker and there's probably a lot of them on here i'm not one personally but i know a lot of them a lot of them are in my life and i think it's fascinating the way people are like about their coffee so like imagine imagine if all of a sudden you started a diet and they were like oh you cannot have coffee before 3 p.m and you someone who's been having coffee in the morning let's say first thing at least in an hour before or an hour after you wake up you've been doing this every day for years now, all of a sudden, you can't have coffee until 3 p.m. Not only are you probably going to be having some sort of withdrawals, you're probably going to be like a nutcase, and you're probably going to be rude as fuck to multiple people in your life. But it's, it's a similar thing with the diet. Like, we have all these eating and, you know, eat thing, habits related to eating and drinking and working out or not working out, you know, being sedentary, whatever it is. We have all these habits. And then all of a sudden, a diet comes knocking on the door, and we're expected to what? Just, we're, we're, we expect our brains, our bodies, our minds, our beings to just forget about all these habits. It's not realistic. 
Again, like I said, imagine all of a sudden you cannot have a cup of coffee in the morning. You know, like imagine that all of a sudden you can't shower in the morning. Imagine if you had to, imagine if there was some crazy rule where it was like, oh no, you can't wear a seatbelt anymore. And you're someone who drives all the time. I know it seems dramatic, but it's true. With so much of what we do every single day are our habits. And, you know, this is something that I talk about a lot in my free guide, which is called uh how to lose weight and keep it off oh, no that's bad it's called how to lose weight and keep it off a guide to sustainable healthy lifestyle without diets or deprivation it's completely free the link is in my bio if you're interested in that um we dive a little bit deeper i'm not going to go too deep into that tonight but just understanding that when you think about how habits work it does not make sense that you will have all these habits that you've learned your entire life and all of a sudden you would just drop them simply because you're on a diet like I said before, you're not crazy. You're not, you know, you're not dumb. You're not any less than anybody else because you can't stick to a diet. It's not realistic for you to just unlearn all these habits overnight. You guys have probably seen a lot of people talking about breaking generational curses and, you know, building generational wealth, generational health, all these things. This is because there are things that have been passed down to us from like our parents, our environment, our families, our friends, all these things that will not change overnight. Stop expecting them to. All right. That was number one. Number two, <sighs> diets are typically a one size fits all solution. This is why typically a diet has like very specific guidelines, right? Oh, these are the foods that you can't eat. These are the foods that you cannot eat. This is worth this many points. You know, this has this, whatever, whatever the rules are. They're not like, oh, okay, here's a diet broken down into 10 people. You know, they, they don't, they're not like, oh, this is for people who have issues with this. This is for people who have issues with this. That I know of. I could be wrong by all means. Let me know if I am. But to my knowledge, most diets are like, this is the diet. This is how you do it. Like I, I can literally remember years ago hearing about the Special K diet and thinking that was going to be like my end all be all. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys know Special K. Um, I know more than cereal, but you probably think of the cereal. And basically their diet was you have, you, you no, so you have three meals a day, three, you have three meals a day and two out of the three meals, excuse me, has to be Special K. So whether that is a bowl of cereal or whether it is like one of their meal bars and then the third meal you can have whatever you want and then you can have like two special case snack bars when i think about that now the thought that i even tried to do that is actually fucking hilarious i mean a bowl of cereal who like who I mean, and if you know me, you know I eat. Like, I eat. And especially, you know, when I work out, like, I'm starving. Like, it's just, it's it's not, it's not realistic. Anywho, anywho, let me go back. Point being is that, again, diets are not a one, diets are a one size fit all solution. But we're not all the same. We have different struggles. We have different strengths. We have different weakness. We have different weaknesses. Our bodies have different needs. Our bodies have different wants. It doesn't make any sense to assume that there's going to be one diet that's going to just be equal for everyone that couldn't carbs is going to be as simple for you as it is for me or skipping breakfast again okay. <laughs> I'm sorry like I listen like, no shade to anybody who is doing intermittent fasting but um, when I heard that I literally was just like wait what and, I'm, and and I also realized that there are a lot of people who don't eat breakfast for some reason like some people say they don't have an appetite there are people who say that you know they have coffee instead that's all well and good I am one of those people like I get up at 5 30 I'm like starting my 5 45 like there's I wouldn't even attempt to to not eat in the morning. Like I just I could not do it, and I would not be a human, and I wouldn't even be nice. I'm not that nice, regardless. But I would be like extra, extra. It would be worse. It would be like so, so bad. Again, one size fits all. Not realistic. Now, what else? Understanding that number one, that's not a bad thing because you couldn't do keto or because you couldn't do paleo or because you couldn't do intermittent fasting you know you couldn't do the atkins diet whatever it is you couldn't do weight watchers again that's there's nothing wrong with you if it wasn't for you it wasn't for you don't feel bad about it um and then also keeping in mind that diets tend to focus so much on what you can't do and that's another reason why we don't stick to them i mean think about it why would we get excited? Why, why would we stick to something that's saying, oh, don't eat this, don't eat this, don't eat that, you know, don't do this before 4 p.m., only do this. Like, I mean, literally, uh, diets are typically geared around restrictions. And it's human nature to not want to be deprived. 
why do we make ourselves feel guilty about that? Like, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like, why do we feel bad? Because, oh God, you know, I haven't eaten, oh, I love this thing and I haven't had it all week. And then you're, you feel bad. You feel bad for feeling bad. Like it's, it is, it is completely ridiculous. Honestly, like it's, it's ridiculous. They focus all this stuff on what you cannot do instead of focusing on, fo instead of focusing on long-term healthy habits that you can that you can work on, you know, like a little bit at a time. And of course, you know, you know things, you know, certain things you will have to have in moderation if you do want to lose weight. But there shouldn't, in my opinion, any diet that says you can't eat this, fuck off. You're not about to tell me what I can't eat because I can eat whatever the fuck I want to eat and I'm going to eat what I want to eat. I'm not saying that I should eat it every day. I'm not saying I should, I'm not saying I should eat it multiple times a day, but to tell someone that they shouldn't eat something, to label foods as good or bad is just I mean, it's it's setting yourself up for failure and it really doesn't do anyone any good. Okay, number 3. And this one is big, y'all. Diets typically do not focus on mindset shifts. And like any other goal in your life, if there's anything challenging that you're trying to overcome, you are going to have to shift your mindset. You're going to have to think about the conversations you've been having in your head. You're going to have to think about the things that you say to yourself whenever you're eating good or bad. You're going to have to think about how you think about food, how you think about fitness, how you think about moving your body. You're going to have to focus on things happening on the inside, not just doing more crunches, working out more often, killing yourself in the gym. Like those are all external things that are not going to result in your long term success. Perfect example. So I did the whole 30 back in, I want to say April, April 2018. Now, I first heard about the Whole30. It was either 2016 or 2017. I can't remember exactly when, but I know that it was at least, at least a year. I want to say it was closer to two years. It was almost two years after I heard about the Whole30 that I did it. When someone first told me what the Whole30 was, y'all, I was like, what? Like, I mean, like, I literally, I was like, that's crazy. No one, obviously no one could do that. No one, it didn't even, it didn't even cross my mind to try it because at that point in time I was in the mindset of how can anyone give up all processed food how can anyone give up all you know no added sugars how can anyone cook that often like my mindset was this is not possible except for you know the like super health freaks who you know they were ingrained and born into this lifestyle but outside of that this is not logical that that was me and guess what I did it I did the whole 30 back in 2018 and I didn't even die it was actually <laughs> Side note, I'm gonna think I'm gonna do like a video on this at some other point. But yeah, when I did the whole 30, like I was shocked. I was shocked at the benefits. I was shocked at how it really wasn't that difficult, especially once you get past like that first week. Like I, I mean, there's still so many takeaways that I have from that that I incorporate in my in like the way that I eat literally today and like the way that I think about food today. Now, understanding that the whole 30, it really isn't about, I mean, in my opinion, it's not about dieting. It really is about, you know, eating whole and cleaner foods. And that's been a really big part of my, my health journey, which I'll talk about some other night. But um, again, going back to the point is the work that you have to do on the inside, on yourself, th those things are so much more important than cutting out cookies and going to the gym six days a week. So, so much more important. Something else that I talk about in that, um, that freebie of how to lose weight and keep it off. Um, just honestly, diets are out here to tell you like, oh, um, oh yes, I want to talk about that too. Sorry, I just looked at my notes to realize something. Uh, but you know, diets are telling you not, not, not to eat this, not to drink that, all of these things, but they're not talking about who you are. They're not talking about, you know, the root of what's really going on. They're not talking about mindful eating. They're not talking about your relationship with food. Another example, um, I am currently working with the, I want to say the third health coach, um, I guess like in my entire life, maybe fourth actually, maybe third or fourth. And this is like the first time where I'm working with someone where like, I really feel like, okay, this is, this is a real thing. Like we're actually talking about the stuff that matters. Like I was working with a health coach and she was all about how much protein are you getting? And you know, you need to not be eating these foods and you know, you really need to eat this. And I'm not saying, and here's the thing. I lost weight working with her. I'm not going to lie. I did. But you know what? 
I'm not even gonna say I was miserable, but like y'all, like it it kind of sucked. <laughs> like I felt I felt deprived and I felt like I was on a diet and I was annoyed because I definitely felt like we weren't talking about anything else other than what I was eating and my workouts. That's not that's not what's going to help you lose weight and then keep it off in the long run. Like you have to do the inner work. And that's why I cr actually created that free guide, um, how to lose weight and keep it off. It's actually an interactive guide where it, it helps you work on the things that are happening on the inside, the things that are happening in your mind, body, soul, spirit, the things that are happening in all of this, not just, oh, what are you eating for breakfast? What are you eating for lunch? Link is in the bio for that. And then the other thing to keep in mind is that losing weight is not black and white. Now, I do understand that at the end of the day, to lose weight, you have to burn more calories than you consume, period. I get that. But that is not like that's that's not literally how you are going to get your lasting results by just focusing on that. Like there has to be some deeper inner work that gets done. OK, number four. I've talked about this before. We're going to talk about it again. Diets are literally meant to be temporary. You cannot get long-term results with a temporary process, period. You can decide that you're going to do keto for, you know, three months or decide that you're going to decide that you're going to cut out these carbs that you're going to cut out, you know, any added sugar. You can do those things. And, and you know, you and you know, there's a good chance that you are going to lose weight. But there's also a really good chance that that weight is going to come back, especially if doing those things makes you feel deprived, especially if doing so, doing those things make you want to binge on the weekend. You know, it makes you want to go sneak and, you know, hide food behind behind your friends or your accountability partner, you know, or not tell your coach about the stuff you've been eating. Like those are the kinds of things that are not going to get you to your lasting success. You need to focus on forming long-term healthy habits that will actually create a different lifestyle. You need to think about the habits that you've been doing every single day that are really hindering you from your weight loss goals and focus on small small commitments that you can make to to create better habits that are going to serve you for the rest of your life at the end of the day you got to stop trying to go out you got to stop trying to go on a diet like i know that you're sick of like this vicious cycle of you lose weight you gain it back you lose weight you gain it back because listen honey psh, i'm humble i'm humble as fuck i've been there i've been there more than once and it sucks I mean, that disappointment, that shame, that embarrassment, like I know exactly how that feels. And that's why I'm here talking about these things. That's why I, that's why I talk about, you know, like my journey. That's why I'm trying to get you guys to understand the importance of small commitments and habits versus thinking about versus thinking about diets. I know that it may feel like, oh, but if I focus on habits, it's going to take so long. Bitch, the time go past anyway. It, the time will fucking pass regardless. So you can look at this as, okay, a year from now, I can look up and, you know, be the same way that I am. I know that I tried to go on a diet seven times over the past year and it all failed. Or you can look up and be like, hey, I've lost a little bit of weight, but I feel really good about myself. And I'm proud of how far I've come. And I've gone from never working out to taking a walk at least three days a week. And, oh, I used to never eat vegetables, but now I eat, I'm eating at least one vegetable a day. Like, it doesn't have to be the big thing. Like, small wins are wins. That's something that I'm constantly beating into my own brain. So I want to beat it into you guys' brain, too. Please, please, please understand, like, diets will always fail you. You have to focus on those long-term habits that's going to get you to those health, to get you to that healthy lifestyle. You've already tried all the diets. Diets, try something different. Listen, I created this free guide, How to Lose Weight and Keep It Off, a guide to, to a sustainable, healthy lifestyle without diets or deprivation. Again, like it's all about doing that inner work. It's like it's it's literally it's it's interactive. Like you are actually participating in this. You're getting crystal clear on like the root of your issues, and that that way you you're setting the foundation to set yourself up for success. Side note, I do also have something very cool coming for you guys. So I'm going to tell you how I lost that 16 pounds last year during the pandemic without a diet. Or a gym, stay tuned for that. But for now, go ahead and grab that free guide if you haven't. Like I said, the link is in my bio. Again, I'm Bianca Lynch with BiancaLynchCoaching.com. This was Why Diets Will Always Fail You. Any um, questions or comments, please feel free to drop them below. And otherwise, we will see you guys next week on Goal Slay Monday.